Previously on Bottom Feeders. It ain't coming. Yeah, it freaks you out. The big C, who wouldn't that put the fear of the Lord into? Right now he's in good health and he's still strong. I'm gonna do everything I can to my power and catch him as much fish as humanly possible. Do the best you can until you can't move no more and keep going. The Pepin fish market burned to the ground. These guys are gonna need a place to sell their fish. We desperately need help. Carp, sheephead, buffalo, and suckers. For most Americans, these bottom feeders have no place in our lakes or on our plates. But there are fishermen who have found opportunity. can produce far more than any individual effort. But if the arrangement falters, both parties risk being dragged down like an anchor. In Illinois, Tim Adams and Jeff Reederman have an opportunity jumping right at them. Like downtown. I don't know much about those silver carp. It's my first time. It'll be a learning experience. All right, now you can start go that way. Fishing for the flying carp or the silver carp. There's just trillions of these fish down here. It's just crazy. We definitely could use the cash. Fishing for low-priced silver carp is a case of quantity instead of quality. Decent sized haul will make a good amount of money. You could really get into a lot of trouble out here laying this kind of net out. Today, Tim and Jeff are trying an old technique on a huge scale. We're just gill netting the fish. We're gonna use about 10,000 feet of net. Gill netting is an ancient but highly effective technique. A series of vertical panels are dropped to the bottom of the water. Fish are caught three ways, wedged, tangled, and gilled. It's kind of a pain in the butt versus seining, but it's a good way to get a bunch of fish. You don't have to worry about getting snagged up, mudded in. It's, that's not an issue with the gill nets. And we'll drive the fish down into this U, then we'll use the rest of this and layer across. Yeah, the large-scale gillnet operation is definitely new to me. For me, 10,000 feet of gillnet's an awful lot of doggone gillnet. We'd never would dream of using that much up to the north. Pay attention. He's never paying attention. No idea. He's in La La Land most of the time. He's going around in circles. I don't think he even knows what direction he's going most of the time. Jeff, pay attention and go that way a little bit. Jesus. Pain in the ass. You can't work 20 hours a day, five, six, seven days straight. And, you know, you just get so dogged out pretty soon. Yeah, people are gonna get on each other's nerves, but we understand it's just part of the game and we get by it. Jeff, Jeff. Jeff! You better watch out or he'll be wrapped up in that gill net. Very rarely is there a disagreement between us. We just go out there, have a good time, hope for the best, but expect the worst. I don't know, here we, I'm not seeing a lot of fish hit the net, but I guess we'll find out. For any small business, growth is a goal and a challenge. To meet growing demand for fish, Jeff Ritter is trying to expand his team. I don't know, I might have some new help today if the guy shows up. Obviously, he's never fished before, but I'm a good teacher, I think. Business has definitely picked up a lot, and it's, it's now turning to the point where it's, it's getting a little stressful. We don't have enough manpower. Hell time is it? 10 to 10, I thought he was going to be here at 9 o'clock. Got a recommendation from a friend of mine that they say he's a pretty good worker and whatnot, and I hope he can be an asset to our business. Nolan, That's nice to meet you. It's all right. Um, you know I know how to tell time? Is it, you said 10? I said 9. I have not had good luck with hiring anybody that can show up on time. So you got some boots for me? 
You do understand we're going fishing. Yeah. It's a little bit of a concern that he doesn't have any fishing experience, but I can teach anybody to do this job. You just, you just gotta be willing. Already an hour behind schedule, Jeff and the Greenhorn are bound for the Mississippi. Why don't you go ahead and get the truck hooked up to the boat? I need to find somebody that can help us grow is the bottom line. I hope he can be an asset to our business. How's that saying go, you can't judge a book by its cover, but we'll find out. Usually I'm a pretty patient one. Are you serious? Son, hook up the boat. That's a fishing boat. Boy. Did I say I could teach anybody? I really need to rethink that. I uh, I think I can teach almost anybody. Oh my God. I'm hooking it on, don't move. What year did silver carp first appear in the United States? What year did silver carp first appear in the United States? The answer is C. Silver carp were imported into North America in the 1970s to control algae growth. On the Illinois, Tim and Jeff have 10,000 feet of gill net in the water. We kind of set this trap, and then we come across, we, we, we actually end up encircling the whole school of fish at the end of this net. Once we got them blocked off, then we just chase the heck out of them until we figure there's enough in the nets and pick her up. I like to go back down that net a little ways and then make a loop. We're gonna try and drive down this bank. How far down do you wanna go? Oh, we'll go up to the landing. 10,000 feet of gill net out, and I can't see the other end of that net, and it's like, wow. With the gill net in position, the crew is almost ready to drive the fish into their trap. Hey, I might stop in. I got something I got to grab out of my truck quick. Go ahead. I found out I got like a skin condition that's just right on the verge of going full-blown skin cancer. Watched a lot of family members die of cancer, but some of us have more time than others, you know. It's a uh, deal with it as it goes, but. You know, you always worry about Jeff's health, and today there's something going on. He ain't himself today. It's good to have him out here fishing all the time, keep his mind off of whatever's bothering him, you know. There they are. I'm taking chemo drugs, and yeah, they make me sick. They make me forgetful. You're tired all the time. People waste too much time on self-pity, I guess. As far as I'm concerned, I'll have plenty of time to rest once I'm dead. And I'll just do the best I can until then. Still moving today, that's all that counts. Back on the water, the crew uses the boat to make vibrations that push the fish toward the gill net. I don't know, I'm not seeing a lot of jumpers. I'm starting to get pretty concerned about not seeing a lot of fish in the net. Holy shit, look at that net. Look at that son of a shit. The extent of the resource become pretty apparent at that point, the jumping like you're inside of a popcorn machine. You're not supposed to jump over the net. As soon as you see them fish jumping out of the water and them big numbers and you know, yep, finally, you know, you, you did it right. I hold silver in the way! That net is on fire, look at that. We can make a lot of money down here in a short period of time. That's pretty crazy. I had one hit me right in the nuts. God, that's a small target. What's the odds of that? <laughs> Jeff and the rookie Nolan finally arrive at the river. I'm gonna hit the Mississippi River, hope for the best, try to get a couple of boatloads of uh, buffalo, would really help with the orders. Hey, Nolan. 
Yeah, we're here. I don't mean to be a stickler, but when we're here, we want to get our stuff done and... Nolan, let's get going. I need help. I'm definitely going to give him the benefit of the doubt. I hope he can just kind of work into things. That phone can get in the way a little bit. With hours burned, Jeff and his temporary partner need to get nets in the water immediately. Come on. This is going to be a long day if he doesn't get off that thing. I hope he's looking up a fishing manual. Pull that truck out, would you, Nolan? Brake! The emergency brake! There you go, that a girl. Beautiful day to go catch. Buffalo prefer a habitat where they can forage for small crustaceans and larvae. The species is hard to find. For Jeff, the best chance for a good haul is to cast his net as much as possible. You snap, Chad? Do I snap what? Come on, get in here. I'd like to snap that phone right in half. We're gonna go straight up there and then we're gonna string this net out that way. A small net like this is a two-man job. One handles the net while the other maneuvers the boat. Give her a little gas. Steer it more. There you go. OK, slow down. There you go. Use your fisherman sense. I'm not sure if he's learning at all. I think that he's picked up on a couple of things, but it's so slow and frustrating. Angle right at the point of that island. That way, you're not paying attention. I can't understand what you're saying, Jeff. Not so much. You could go just a stitch faster. Wait a minute, what the f are you doing? Hold on. That's too much? Said... Forward? Loop it, no, no. Just, you, why you go so fast? Uh, th th this is gonna be a long day. I'm not sure what land he's in, but um, I'm really starting to second guess my decision in bringing him out here. I thought you said faster. No, no, For you the need loop. to get your ears fixed. Go this way. In, come on. No, the other fuck. What do you mean? Get me in there. I don't mean to yell and I... Towards the shore a little bit. Yes, there you go. Yeah, don't go in any closer to the bank. I think you're safest up front. Illinois, Tim and Jeff are catching flying fish before they've even started pulling their net. How many you got in the bowl? We got eight of them in here. We got 11. I've never had 20 fish jump in my boat before I even lifted the net to try and get one. Yeah, that was all right, Tim. I'm gonna take back half the bad I said about you behind your back this morning. This is just great down here fishing because you can actually see the fish. Everything's good, we're gonna get them. With fish in position, the crew readies the gill net. Keep pulling that net in. Get all this net pulled in. We, we can make a lot of money down here. It could happen. I'll get them. You just throw them up there. Looking good. It's looking really good. After seeing the 10,000 feet of net, now I'm thinking, could we turn the 10,000 feet into 15,000? Yeah, it's just loaded over here. It's good to have two sets of eyes, two minds working on problems and taking half the, the worries off your shoulders. I can't see any of my cork, so that means it's all fish. Thank God it was a good haul. We should have close to $3,000 today, easy. Wow. Good to see all them fish in the boat. So things are gonna go well, I think. I'm hoping the buyer's gonna be happy with the fish and we can continue bringing fish in. Boat's filling up today. With their net in the water, Jeff and Nolan must drive the fish into position. We're gonna go up here and we're gonna make some noise and scare them down. We're lucky we could catch a few here and get out of here. Be great. I don't know how to bring his enthusiasm out, but um, it's dragging the day on. It's, it's frustrating. We'll do this for probably maybe five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever, and then we pick it up and 
Oh, I think I think we've driven enough. I think that they're in the net. Now did you even know? He has no idea how long we got to drive these fish. We drive the fish until I think that it's good. But for him to tell me that they're fish, if they're if they're here, they're here. If they're not, they're not. You gonna put a little money on it? A little bet? I'll take that bet. I'll bet you a six pack. I, I can already taste the beer. We we got them. We got one. You just bet against yourself. We got a ton. We got a lot, dude. I don't know what to think. <laughs> Look at the net. It's all fish. It's the first time in a while betting like this I've lost. But I tell you what, I'm glad I lost. Wow. I didn't expect this. We don't even have a third of the net picked up. I thought after the way it's been going, we might catch a few. At 4,000 pounds, which I'm, I'm guessing that we got, maybe even a little better at a, at a quarter a pound, that's a thousand bucks. Now we can get to fill in some of the orders. Are we getting close? I just got to text my girlfriend. I told her I'd be off at four. I'm just going to let her know that I can't do that. Maybe you just tell her you're going to shut your phone off for the day. She hates it when I shut my phone off. Well, I said we'd fill the boat, and we filled her, dude. Boat's full. Crushed them today. You ready? Snap trap? Yeah, you ready? Yeah. get into a lot of trouble out here laying this kind of net out. 10,000 feet of gill net out. It's like, wow. Is this going to work? Holy shit, look at that net. We can make a lot of money down here. I hold silver and away. When entering into a partnership, both members share the potential for reward and the burden of risk. Riding high on their big haul of silver carp, Tim and Jeff are delivering the fish to a first time buyer. Yeah, come on back. I cannot see you wherever you're at. Keep coming. Oh, oh. We're using this market down here in Thompson, Illinois, and he's the only guy that I know of that'll buy that kind of volume of fish. I mean, the kind of volume that we need to sell. This is the fish market manager, James. Well, I need fish. I don't have anything in house right now. Buyer can reject that whole load based on anything. You know, if he don't like the way you look, he can send you on down the road. And... We agreed on the prices there. I talked with Jeff first before I talked to you. We agreed on 10 on silvers. Tan on silver. So apparently Jeff set up some kind of a deal with these guys before I even got down here, and he seems to think that 10 cents a pound is, is going to cut it. So he's undercutting me again. <laughs> he's undercutting you again. We're giving the silvers away, unfortunately. That generally constitutes the largest share of the catch, but I still think we can get enough. The price on the grass and the big heads is, is good enough to kind of offset the poor price on the silvers. They can't wait any longer. We got to get moving. I'll go get the help. I can't, I can't figure it out. I just, I don't know what God. We got to get in good with that buyer. That's the only way we're going to do it. And if we got to do it with cheap fish, I guess that's the way we got to do it. Good things come to those who wait. on the Mississippi, Jeff and the rookie Nolan are getting off the water with an unexpectedly strong haul. He's green, but he seems like he's willing to learn. It might have sparked uh, some interest that he wants to learn a little more each trip, and I think that's what draws you in. Hopefully Nolan works out good or whatnot. I'm gonna, got a little security camera here. I'm gonna just kind of watch him. It's, it's how you find out how loyal or a good help can be. You wanna come on in, Nolan? Yeah. I want to see how he works when I'm not around. I'm not convinced that I can fully trust him yet. All right, you just simply that lower vent, gut him up to the, the throat, clear the guts out. The catching part isn't 
just the most important part of our business. We have to process them and make them look respectable to sell them as well. All right, well, so good luck. See you later, um, I guess. This is Jeff's wife, Sue. So how'd your day go? I don't know what to think of him. You know, he showed up an hour late, which... Oh, nice start. You know how I deal with that. Yep. My wife is a big part of the business. She gives good advice. As far as judge a character, she's very good at that. Ask me if I tweet her, <laughs> Snapchat. Yeah. We don't do that. No, not when you're working. He's claimed he could take care of business out in the market. Oh, that was close. I kind of put a little uh, security camera out there just to see how he does on his own. I honestly hope that, that he proves to be good because we, we definitely could use him. Oh, that works pretty good. What's he doing? That's that damn text. Good God. There he goes. Cool. Don't cut your hand off, dude. I told him he could do one tub every five minutes. This is... <laughs> <laughs> what? Come on. Put that phone down. What you? No, it's not funny now. God. What is he doing? Why do you think it's funny? It's your money as much as mine. I guess I'm, I'm right back to where I started. I really need the help. I don't know what I'm going to do. My God. I'm going to text him, because obviously he's a good texter, <laughs> and tell him that he's on vacation permanently. <laughs> God, I have bad luck hiring people.